Is that majority rule? I don't think so. It's majority participant rule. But those are two vastly different propositions. I don't know. Let, let, me, ask, let me ask you all a question. Let me see a show of hands among you. If you think it's not only our right, but it's our duty to vote. Okay, that was a trick question. <laughs> the follow-up question is this. If it is our duty to do it, why not compel participation? Why don't we require people to vote? How many of you think that would be a good idea? We require people to do their duty in so many other areas. To pay child support, to get their dogs vaccinated, to buy car insurance. Why not require people to do one of the most important functions we have as citizens? Let me ask you another question. It seems to me that we are to the point, and John may disagree with this, we are to the point almost with certainty of being able to forecast election results statistically. Statistical analysis any day of the week will give us a closer reflection on the desires of the American people than any sort of election we're running today, in my opinion. What would you, what's your view? That's your question. It's changed a lot. It has changed a whole lot. And in fact, uh, I actually witnessed this in Boston voting one time in Santiago, Chile. I was there on a Sunday, which was election day, and everybody was compelled to vote. And they did nothing else that day, except I guess they had church, but they all gathered in the square after voting. They spent the day talking to each other about voting. That's another good thing. So maybe we need to change some trends, I understand. You know, in 19, as late as 1940, and some of you may still recall that year, as late as my one, now I won't ask for a show of hands on my one. But let, let, listen to this. In 1940, 10% of the eligible voters in Virginia voted. Mostly because of what was going on with Jim Crow and the poll tactics. But I think that's shameful. I think it's shameful that our turnout is as low as it is now. Let me give you one other piece of useless trivia. Anybody here from Floyd County? Good. In the 1932 presidential election, this is first Roosevelt versus Hoover. There was one county east of the Mississippi River that stayed with Hoover. I'll give you one guess. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple of other rhetorical questions I think we ought to give some thought to. Why do we need voter registration? Why do I need to register for a right that the Constitution gives me. How long do 
when you think it will be before we can vote by telephone. How many of you believe that convicted felons who have served their sentences and paid their so-called dues to society should be allowed to vote? I don't think they should be allowed. I think they should be made. Uh, you know, I, I think about how to increase participation a lot. And it seems the more money we spend, the easier we make it, the less success we have. I don't know why that is. But I don't think it bodes well for us as a people in the future. We have, we have whole generations of people. I know some individuals. Father, son, grandson have never voted in their lives. And if you ask them why, it's because they don't want to serve on a jury. How many of you all hear that? There's got to be some disconnect made from that. I don't think that process gives us good voters or good jurors. Well, I've rattled on a little bit, but before we take any questions, I want to tell you about sweet Patrick County. We live to be real old up in Patrick County. Living is easy. Our consciences are somewhat clean. <laughs> and we don't worry ourselves to death. We live to be so old in fact that one of the researchers from one of the big universities down east came up to the mountains that I live in to see if he could determine why we were living so long. So he gets to town and he stops two or three places and he inquires who is the oldest man in Patrick County? And they all point up the same hollow. You go up this little mountain hollow and you'll find the oldest man in this country. So the researcher pulls, pulls up there and sure enough, standing in the yard is the oldest man he's ever seen. This guy's bent over, he's bald headed, he's got a white beard down to his waist, and he's propped on a cane, and he's standing there in the yard. And the researcher thinks to himself, I have found Methuselah. <laughs> he gets out of the car and notices that the old man is crying. And he says, Mister, what are you crying about? And he said, My daddy quit me. And he said, what did he whip you for? And the old man said, for sassing granddad. <laughs> That's all I've got to say, and I'll take your question. 